so today I'm going to show you some loose insects. Um, I want to kind of utilize how I like to create very simple loose versions of an insect and then go in sometimes with pens to create more of a structure. So let's talk what you're going to need. You are going to need 140 pound watercolor paper. If you do not have 140 pound, that's okay. You can use whatever you have to hand. However, I do recommend watercolor paper with a higher weight because it will take more water. And the way I like to paint is to use quite a lot of water. So I do recommend having a like a thicker paper. You're going to need pens this time. Now I'm going to be use, using a Pigma Micron pen. This is by Sakura. The reason I like this pen is because it is um, waterproof ink. If you don't have a pen like that, a ballpoint pen will work too, provided your images that you've done with paint are completely dry. I do also have a Uniball Signo white uh, pen. Again, it's like a gel pen, goes really well over the top. And then this is also a calligraphy pen, which I may or may not use. You're also going to need water. You're going to need paint brushes. I'm going with a five round and a three round, but again, any brushes will do. And then today I will be showcasing the Viviva color sheets because I'm obsessed with these colors and they're highly pigmented paints. But if you don't have these, um, again, any watercolors will do. So let's start things off nice and simple. With a wet brush, I'm painting with water and doing a half circle, a semicircle. I'm going to do another half circle over here. It doesn't matter if it bleeds across, that's part of the fun. And then I'm going to go with the crimson colour because I want a red. And I'm just going to drop that into the water and let it move around. I find this kind of painting to be very therapeutic. I just really enjoy the process. I'm just putting varying amounts of pigment into the water because when this dries it will give a really beautiful almost tie-dye effect and I'm going to leave him to dry a little bit. I'm going to speed up the butterfly a little bit because I have done a class on this already on YouTube on how to do watercolor butterflies using Viviva. I highly recommend you check that out. Um, but again I'm, I'm painting on my shape with the water and then I'm dropping my color in. I am now going to go in with a yellow and I'm going to do some yellow stripes. I wonder if you can guess what this is going to be. <laughs> and I'm actually going to straight away wash my brush and go in with some black and I'm going to let it bleed in to the yellow very subtly. And my main focus is getting this kind of shape to come through sort of overly shape. I'm going to do a couple more insects on this page just so we've got more to work with here. Same idea, just letting the water spread through um, the paints and I'm just going to stick with these bees, uh, ladybugs and butterflies. I absolutely love some of the effects that have happened as you can see where the watermarks have like created these beautiful cell-like shapes. This one here I feel like because of the way watercolor works on watercolor paper, it almost looks fuzzy, which is the idea. So now we're gonna take the smaller of the brushes, the detail brush, the small round, we're gonna do some details on here. More concentrated than watered down this time. And I'm going to put it in my body shape. So I want three parts to make this clearly a butterfly. And they're quite simple to do. If you just do three segments, it will read as a butterfly. Got that thorax, abdomen, and the head. For my ladybug, I'm just gonna do another little semicircle at the top of the kind of the head part portion. Um, if you don't know what these insects look like, it's always useful to have a little reference. I always have one nearby of whatever I'm painting. And you don't have to follow it completely, but it does help. And I'm just drawing some black for my body. And now for my B, I'm going to paint on some more little kind of fluffy parts, I guess that's the best way to describe it, the little hairs that the B has. I'm just doing a couple of little back and forward strokes. It's just to kind of 
really highlight certain areas of each insect. And again, we could do this with the pens. I just like to do a little bit more with my paintbrush and I'm gonna add on my um, antenna and feet. My brush was still slightly wet and it is picking up the paint that I've already put down, which is actually quite cool. I want it to feel like it's in motion. So for the final stage, I'm going to go in with my pens, the micron pen for the details like the antenna that I get a nice thin line, can do some little points on there. Um, I like to use a waterproof ink for details like this, but it's not a necessity provided you've allowed your body shapes to completely dry before you get started. So I'm loving how this is drying so much that I'm actually going to change up what I'd planned to do and I was going to draw on my wings with the pen but I actually really love how we're using just a wet brush dragging the wing shape from the paint is actually spreading the paint that's already on there very subtly but as you can see just letting that kind of bleed through. I'm going to let it dry again and I can do some detail with the pen, but I quite like how kind of loose this looks. It's, it's quite a fun effect. So for the final stages, I'm going to go in with a brush pen, actually, a black brush pen that I decided my calligraphy pen because it moves so beautifully. I've allowed the paint to completely dry now so I can use this non-waterproof ink on there. But again, you could use your micron pen for this or any gel pen. And I'm just going to do details. I'm making this look like a monarch. I'm drawing on the cells. I'm adding a couple of loose lines to the wings. And then I'm finishing off with a white gel pen just for some highlights on the eyes of the ladybug and little parts of the monarch. And there you have it. I've kept it as simple as possible, but still getting some details with those lines. And I really like the end result. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, let the water and the paint do its thing and then go in and kind of highlight the areas with your gel pens and have some fun.